Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production, and today I want to show you how you can make video game sounds, specifically 8-bit style video game sounds, like something you'd hear in the 80s. So, let's get started. I have M Sound Factory here. Let's open it up. I want to make sure the attack is all the way down and the sustain is all the way up. And let's just make this monophonic. I believe all the sounds back then actually were all monophonic. I don't think any of those old games were polyphonic, but anyways. Here we go. Let's just start off something simple. We're going to use an oscillator here. And let's go over how to make this dirty. There's two ways to do it. If I start with a sine wave here. We have a sine wave. Now if we want to dirty it up, we have two ways. One way we can do it is, I think I showed this before, is by going in here and using this quantize like this. If I have it all the way up, it doesn't sound much different. But as I turn it down, you can hear that grit in there. And you can adjust that however you want. I'll show you a second way to do that if you don't want to do it this way, and sometimes this is useful too, is to use something like mbitfun or bitfun here. And it's set at 8 bits by default. You can actually hear a little bit of a difference in here. Let me turn the low pass off. If you listen really carefully, especially if you have a, like headphones or something on, you can hear this versus this. You can hear all that grit and everything in there, you know, that aliasing. And I should mention for this, here in the oscillator, it automatically has on allow oversampling and allow anti-aliasing. Don't really need that because actually I want it to alias and I want it to sound dirty like a uh, cheap digital. So just turn that all the way off. As I said before, in bit fun, it's set in default to eight bits, but if you turn it down, it'll get more gritty like this. Like that. If you think it's too bright, engage the low pass here. Those old sounds. Uh, from there, we can do other things, but I think that's pretty good. I might turn this up. I think, ah, uh, four is too much. Try five. Whatever you want. Uh, I like it there. Another thing we can do, they oftentimes did with older video games, is using vibrato. And of course, we can go in the oscillator here, and we could use like the semitones or synths and use an LFO to do that, but that's actually an easier way. We can use this vibrato here, like this. And it should be on already. You can do the same thing with tremolo here. So just that and play with that however you want. If you like that sound, uh, sometimes they do that with older, you know, 8-bit synths, and you wonder, like, whoa, how they're doing that? But just play with the depth and the rate, and you can get all sorts of interesting sounds. With it. Now let's try something a bit different. What we're going to do now is try an explosion sound, like you'd hear. Let's see here. We're going to use the noise oscillator. Where is it? Noise generator there. And we have this, and it sounds like this. This is okay, but... We want it to sound like an actual explosion, so it needs to change in time. One thing, I believe the old synthesizers for video games didn't actually have filters, so we can't use that, but they do have ADSR. So we're going to take this, turn the sustain all the way down, adjust the decay, we can even change it like this. See how this sounds? Like that. From here, there's a lots of things we can do. I actually think this is a little bit too bright, so instead of white noise, I'll use pink noise. Sounds good, but it's stereo and I don't want that. So let's move it to mono. And let's get some of that grit in here. So we're gonna use this 8-bit fun here. I'll start it at eight. It's not gonna sound too different. Down. You can hear there, okay, that sounded like some old video game stuff. And if we move the low pass down, you can actually make it sound kind of like it's further away or more bassy.
And of course, just this envelope. Now one thing that might be a problem here is like, ah, pink noise sounds good, but can we actually change that? There might be a better one for this, and that's actually this stairs. You see this probability, if I turn it all the way up, it sounds almost like white noise, but watch and listen as I turn it down. The bit fun doesn't make as much of a difference here, but it still does enhance it a little bit. So that's the sound I remember from old video games. From here, we can do other things with it. So this sounds like an explosion, but we could do the same thing if we wanted, let's say, like a snare drum sound. We just turn this decay way down like this, maybe around like 50 milliseconds. If we put it around 300, it almost sounds like a bass drum here. One thing I wouldn't recommend you doing, but you can do, is we'll set this at 50 milliseconds. And then we'll set, uh, let's say, a flip-flop here. And let's say it'll go up to like 250 or so. 200 something like this. And as we play this, it'll switch between those and it'll almost sound like a uh, bass and a snare. Like that. So that's something you can play with and you can get all sorts of stuff out of that. Um, not saying you should do it that way. I would probably do two separate tracks, one for the bass drum and one for the snare to change it. But I just want to demonstrate how you could do that. By just changing the delay, you can actually influence the sound. But let's go into something else now. I can actually leave this here. One of the sounds you often hear is like a, a pitch dropping sound. And that's fairly easy to do. It's basically just an 808. So if we have this oscillator here, we can use this, uh, let's use the quantize here. Like that, and let's use a uh, triangle wave, just because we haven't done that yet. I should also notice that the quantize and the bit fun don't exactly do the same things. There's times where I've noticed like, oh, the bit fun sounds better or quantize sounds better. I like quantize better because you can actually adjust the amount, but I notice like if you do lots of pitch drops and things, sometimes it sounds weird, which I'm actually gonna do, so we'll see how well this works. Uh, so experiment and use whichever one sounds better to you. I'll use attack one here and I'm gonna open this up and all I wanna do is just like a quick pitch drop. I think it, it like with this inverse exponential curve works better, I think. Move it up a little bit. Move this up here. Uh, about this, and let's let me drop the octaves down on my keyboard. Actually, I'll just do it in here instead of messing with my keyboard. Just drop this like this. And I'll let you hear that, and I'll disable it, and I'll use the in bit fun so you can kind of hear the difference here. You can hear they do actually sound different. I want to make that a little bit longer, I can increase this here, but also, another thing I want to do is I don't want it to sustain afterwards, I don't need this to be an 808. I want it to actually decrease, so let's set the uh, decay for around like 500, I think that's what I had the attack at, move this down, here how it sounds. And if I move this off, it sounds even deeper. Now this is sounding like, you know, like something you hear in an old video game. Let me move this up, try six or seven. That's something like you'd hear like, um, I don't know, like end of a level or something, the fireworks. Like that. And of course, if I want more um, high end, I can just move this up. So. You get more into laser sounds if you do that, but that's how you do it. From here, let's actually combine these two and do something interesting, like a, a kind of like a, a hit sound, like somebody something really heavy is hitting the ground, like you hear in an old video game. 
I'm going to take all of these and all I'm going to do is just take this and I'm going to use a ratio and put this and the noise together. Slide chain two, got it. I already have that disabled. And from here, I can blend it to see how it sounds. I might need to turn this probability up. And just balance. Ah, uh, too bright. This is a little bit too high. It's down. And then from there, let's move the bits down. Five. Now, of course, you have to find the right note on your keyboard so it sounds good, but that's basically how you do it. From there, let's move on a little bit. And the most interesting one for me is the ARP stuff, the arpeggiator. And so I'll do the same thing. I'll use this sound. Let me move this up here and turn the pitch drop off. Like that. Let's put the sustain at full and let's get into some arpeggio stuff. Uh, first one I'll do, let me see if I can do the uh, coin sound. So if I have this here, uh, take all these off. And we'll do A, and then I forgot if it's five semitones or if it's, actually it's an octave up like this. So I'll do this, and instead of having this sync to the tempo, let's just move the tempo up and do this manually. See how this sounds. Let's move it up again. That's almost right, but actually for this, I used this triangle sound. I actually remember, that's actually not right. It's between a sine and a square sound. So here's our perfect sine, our squares up here. Let's do it like that. Yeah. Try this. And of course we can mess with this. That's sounding pretty good. From here, there's a few other problems. Uh, I should talk about this, the length here. You can change this and it actually sounds really different. So I'll play it again. This is how it was before, linked at 100%. Linked at 25%. I think for this sound, maybe having this one at 50, this one here. And then let's move this over. And these two here at the same tone, it'll kind of have a sustained sound like this. Maybe too long. Erase this one. But it still doesn't have that ringing sound at the end. And that's where I can mess with the release. So I'll play it and do this. That's sounding pretty good. I still think, ah, uh, you know what? There's a little bit too much here. Move this up to six. A little bit too much dirt. Uh, I think that's sounding pretty good. I can also go in here and change this. Let's try the quantize, see if that sounds any better. Quantize, here we go. That's sounding pretty good to me. Maybe not perfect, but I think uh, that's, that's close to exactly what I want. From here, let's do some other ARP stuff. Uh, I showed you maybe a previous device before that I made here. This is inside here. It's called Chipper I made. You can look in the effects and you can find it. And this one, I have a bunch of different sounds like this. So I'll go over it and show you how to make those. I think in another video I went over it briefly, but I'll show you in here. I actually put all the ARPs in here. So if you look in the presets, I have effects here. If you want, I'll actually upload these so you can get them yourself. But uh, anyways, this one falling downstairs, I showed it. It just goes down chromatically every four. So it starts 12 semitones, 11 semitones, etc. And it sounds like this. 
like that. And of course, if you want to make this really shorter. If you're wondering, like, I want it to sound a little bit more percussive on the low end, change the length. Try 25 here. Apologies. Hard keeping my hand steady. Here we go. And of course, you can change the release like this. There you go. And there's other ones here, like rising, it's just going up chromatically. Falling. Start menus, the same thing I showed you before, it's just, uh, I think this is not exactly, so half, one semitone here. So instead of a perfect octave, this is a, uh, what's it, major seven? This one is just a diminished arpeggio, so it's uh, the root note, uh, minor third, minor third, minor third. Sounds like this. Probably seen that in lots of video games. Here's the same thing, it's just an augmented uh, triad, or is it, yeah, yeah, augmented triad. There we go. Same thing with a minor chord, major chord. There you go. And of course, you can adjust this to taste like uh, I'm thinking, ah, should I put this 8 bit on? I think I have both of them going here. To me, this is sounding a lot like the old video game sounds. Uh, another thing I should have mentioned before is... Let me turn this off. The most common ones you'll see are the sine and the triangle, but also the square. When you quantize a square or bit crush it, it actually doesn't sound that different. I'm getting a little bit of difference there. And here you can also do the pulse width modulation. And that might be useful. In that case, if you're using the pulse width modulation here, you might want to use the uh, bit fun as the distortion or the digital distortion in that case. But hopefully I showed you how to do some interesting video game sounds. Maybe in the future I'll do a part two if there's anything else somebody's requesting. But uh, until next time, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.